Hello, this is Dr. Rappi. Today we're going to talk about stress, hormones, and belly fat. That's right. This video is for all those people out there who are struggling with their weight, who have struggled for years, and have this belly fat that they can't seem to get rid of. So we're going to talk about all the different factors that could be driving your belly fat and causing you to have this excess weight that you just can't seem to get rid of. So as we go through these slides today, Hopefully, the things that we say make sense to you, and if it, if it looks like it's the path that you're ready to take, I'll give you a solution at the end of how we can move forward and work together to rid yourself of the belly fat. Right now, I'd like to watch a short video of one of our clients. This client happens to be uh, uh, a full-blown diabetic, was taking significant medications. She went through a program. You're going to see the results that she got, and hope, hopefully, it'll inspire you and move forward with the video and that we can possibly work together. So let's take a look and see how she did. Here we go.
Hi, I'm Pat Loria. I'm from Calgary, Canada. I uh, am a snowbird here six months of the year and uh, last year in January 2016 I came to the program that Lori and Dr. Rafi um, offer uh, through a, an evening where you could go for a meal and uh, find out about their program. And what interested me was the information about medication, how medication could uh, be causing a lot of your health problems. Usually we think it's not. I was on eight medications at the beginning and I'm now off five of those eight medications. I'm off two diabetic medication, I'm, uh, medications I'm off uh, blood pressure and cholesterol and that was a big goal for me so I'm really thrilled to say that. I just want to recommend this program. I've lost 65 pounds and I probably haven't feel, felt this well in my whole adult life um, and I just feel it was the answer for me to get healthy, feel healthy, feel better and uh, just really want to encourage people to at least give it a try and at least find out about it. Again, that was a wonderful testimonial, Pat. We appreciate your hard work. You're a superstar, a part of our family, and we'll always, always be there for you. So she did a great job. So let's talk a little bit about Dr. Rappi. My name is Dr. Rappi. I've been in private practice in the Coachella Valley for the last 27 years. I graduated with my doctorate degree in 1989, and since that time I've traveled extensively across the country studying with and training with other functional medicine doctors, receiving postgraduate studies in functional medicine, functional endocrinology, functional immunology, functional blood chemistries and metabolic testing, as well as functional nutrition, to name a few. So you can see that my education is more advanced than normal. My main focus in my practice is functional medicine. We'll talk a little bit more about functional medicine as we go along, but my main focus is functional medicine. Why? The reason why is simple. 75% of all diseases out there today are considered chronic degenerative disease. That's right. Chronic degenerative disease that means that they're lifestyle dependent or that we can change the outcome by changing what we're doing. Lifestyle dependent means that they are, they are really based on what we do on a daily basis will really determine what happens to us. And so it's important to understand that. Functional medicine. Functional medicine is pretty straightforward. We want to assess what's going on with an individual. We want to identify what's the true underlying cause of the symptomologies and attack and resolve the cause. If we do that, we no longer have symptoms. And if you re recall, um, if you're watching this, you're probably taking medications. And if you are, it's because your doctor prescribed them. You see, your doctor's training is really simple. I'm not here to beat them up or bash them. I'm not here to replace your doctor. As a matter of fact, some of my best friends work in that system over there. They refer to it as health care. And I call it crisis care because that's really the truth. The truth is when you're in crisis is when you need that system. The problem is when you have a crisis and you go to them, their solution is really what's in their toolbox, and that's drugs. They'll, they'll assess what your symptoms are, and then they'll give you a drug to minimize and manage your symptoms for the rest of your life. Not attacking or addressing the underlying cause, but minimizing your symptoms for the rest of your life is what really makes money or increases the profits for the pharmaceutical industry. So functional medicine takes just the opposite approach. We want to identify the true underlying cause of your symptom and resolve it using it all natural methods. That's really the difference between what we do and what they do in crisis care. They'll put you on drugs and keep you on them for the rest of your life. Our goal is to really identify what's the true underlying cause, resolving it. When we resolve it, we no longer have symptoms. And then it's your doctor's job to work with us by reducing or eliminating those medications that are no longer necessary. So that's the true essence of what we do in functional medicine. You see, there's over 600 different hormones in the body and they have to be balanced in order for us to be healthy. If they're not balanced, we can run into big trouble. As a matter of fact, if they're not balanced, it could literally cost us our life. Let me give you an example. Let's look at sex hormones. We all have sex hormones. 
These sex hormones have to be balanced in order for us to be healthy. If one of these sex hormones, estrogen, goes absolutely bonkers and blows through the roof, it's super duper dominant. We're in excess amount of estrogen on a regular basis and the other sex hormones are suppressed. In a woman, that person or that woman could be susceptible to breast cancer and a number of other cancers. But let's just look at breast cancer. Breast cancer has killed millions of women because of estrogen dominant situation. We need to balance those hormones out, get them back into balance, and therefore we can eliminate or resolve the underlying issue. So it's really important to understand how important these hormones are in our body. There's another group of hormones that we want to address. There's a group that burns fat and there's a group that stores fat. When the group of hormones that are telling our body to store fat are in overdrive, they're in a in abundance, they're in excess, they're in an, a, a dominant scenario as far as our estrogen or as far as our hormones go, our body will do everything in its power to store fat because that's what the hormones are telling it to. Store fat, store fat, store fat. So it really doesn't matter what your what what program you do, what it, what it is you're attempting to do to lose weight, if your hormone profile is such that the fat storage hormones are in control, they're out of control, they're through the roof, they're in total domination, your body will do everything it can to store fat. It doesn't matter what program you do. Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Weight Watcher, Slim Fast, Medifast, Ideal Protein, Lindora, it really doesn't matter because your body will do everything it can to store fat because that's what the hormones are telling it to do, store fat. So you see, those programs don't work. They don't work, not because I say they don't work, they don't work because the University of California did a huge study and found that 98% of the people that do those programs gain every bit of their weight back and more. Why? Because they didn't balance your hormones. Those programs are not designed to get your hormones back into balance. Those programs are designed really to starve your body of the nutrients necessary for your body to function normally and therefore you lose weight. Okay? They don't work. They don't balance your hormones. Think about the programs that I just mentioned. A number of them send you boxes of food. They call it food. I call it garbage. It's got fillers, additives, preservatives, colors, chemicals, and all these other things that are called disruptogens. They disrupt your body's ability to function normally. They disrupt normal hormone production and normal hormone pathways. They, for, they disrupt normal metabolic processes, normal metabolic pro pathways. And therefore, they actually interfere with your body functioning normally. That's why they're called disruptogens. We don't want that. We want to do something else that will be success successful. And that's where functional medicine comes in. Functional medicine, again, is identifying the true underlying cause of the symptom and resolving it using all natural methods. That's really what functional medicine is. So let's take a look at uh, the great American crisis here. Big pharmaceutical companies are a big part of it, and this is why. What they want is money. Pharmaceutical industry is really geared toward, and their focus really is make money, make money, make money. So what they've done over the many years, they've developed this business model of how can we get more people to take drugs? Well, they've got us convinced through their advertising on, on television, and they've got the doctors on their side, that all you need to do is take a pill that's it. That's the solution for everything. And the pharmaceutical has pushed this big lie on us for many, many years. And they do it because they know if they can get you on a, a drug, they can get you on a drug that does not correct the underlying cause, but it minimizes your symptoms, you'll be happy, and you'll be on those pills for the rest of your life, so they maximize their profits. So the pharmaceutical company is really behind the problem that we see today. In addition to the pharmaceutical company, we can't leave out the insurance company. The insurance companies are also part of the problem. Why? You know, they make money when you're sick. They're in cahoots with the pharmaceutical industry. What do they pay for? Doctor visits, drugs, and surgery. Those are the main three things that they pay for. So they're all part of the problem that exists. We call it the American healthcare system, and it's broken. My friends that work there, they're handcuffed by laws, licensure, and regulations. They have to prescribe you a drug based on your symptoms. And that's just wrong, but that's how it works, and that's what really dominates the healthcare system, and it's driven and it's operated by the pharmaceutical industry. So we, first, we need to acknowledge that that's really what's happening. Their goal is for you to be on drugs for the rest of your life so they can maximize your profits. Now, let's, let's look at a couple of other slides here. 85% of all medical procedures are, and surgeries are scientifically unproven. 
Again, I didn't say this. The British Medical Journal said this. Think about that. 85% of all medical procedures and surgeries are not scientifically proven. That's unbelievable. How about this one? 90% of all diseases prevalent today are not treatable with orthodox medical procedures. That's, that's huge. 90%. Why is that? Well, it's because the pharmaceutical industry develops drugs that you can take for the rest of your life. Those drugs are designed to minimize and manage. Think about it. Let's look at a couple of different drugs just off the top of our head. If a person is taking a, a drug to lower their blood pressure and they stop taking it, what happens to the blood pressure? It goes up. If somebody is taking a drug to lower their cholesterol and they stop taking that drug, what happens to the cholesterol? It goes back up. If someone is taking a drug to lower their blood sugar, or lower their TSH and they stop taking the drug, what happens? Their blood sugar goes up or their TSH goes up. You see, those are examples of drugs that aren't designed to correct the underlying cause. They're designed to minimize and manage your symptoms for the rest of your life so the pharmaceutical companies can make money. Bottom line, there's, oh, there's 29,000 different drugs being prescribed today in America, the vast majority of which do not correct the underlying cause. They minimize your symptoms and manage them for life in order to make maximize the profits for the pharmaceutical industry. So we need to really understand what's going on out there. This is an individual, Pat Loria. She's... Um, There's three different types of stress that we see happening out there today. These are the three types of stress that really affect your body, how it works, and how our body stores fat. So the first type of stress is called physical stress. Physical stress could be anything from overexerting ourselves in the backyard, trimming the bushes, mowing the lawn, rearranging the garage, moving the furniture around the house, moving from one house to another. Maybe you're working on a car. Who knows? Whatever it is, but you overdo it physically, and that changes your body's chemistry and physiology, and it therefore can cause your body to store fat because it causes stress on the chemistry of the body. This next um, type of stress, chemical stress. We're all exposed to chemical stresses on a daily basis. Anybody that doesn't think they are is nuts. There's chemicals everywhere. It's in the soap we use when we wa take a shower, you know, washing our clothes, washing your bed sheets. It's in the laundry if you take your stuff to the dry cleaner. There's chemicals everywhere. It's in the air. It's in the grass. It's on the ground. It's everything you touch. Plastic bottles. You see people drinking out of plastic bottles all the time. So chemicals cause our body to be in dysfunction. It drives us into an imbalance physiologically and chemically, and it really drives a lot of stress in the body. The last type of stress, these are the three major stresses, is emotional stress. We all know what this is evolving. This could, it could involve a boss at work, a coworker that stresses you out. Maybe you're doing three people's jobs for the, for the uh, amount that they would pay to have one person do it. The stress of a boss, the stress of a family member. Maybe you've got a family member who's sick or needs to be taken care of, or you've got grandkids that have lost their way and got in trouble with the law or failing in school. Uh, in my particular case, I've had a couple of my family animals die in the last year, and that's very emotional. It's very stressful. Drives a lot of, uh, a lot of emotions and a lot of stress. Every time I come home from work, I think that my dog is going to be there waiting for me. He's been, he's been gone now for a year, but it's still an emotional thing. And it, it affects me chemically. It affects my chemistry. It affects my body and how it functions physiologically. These, again, are the three types of negative stresses that we see on a daily basis. Everybody does. Let's look at our adrenal glands. How our adrenal glands are affected by stress. When, our, when we're under a stressful situation or we experience any of the three stresses that I just mentioned, our adrenal glands will produce a lot of cortisol. When we have elevations in cortisol, it can affect how our thyroid functions. And if you see by this chart here, you can see that TSH will be affected. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. It comes from the pituitary and tells the thyroid to work harder or work less. In addition to that, high levels of cortisol will block T4 to T3 conversion. When that happens, we're in a lot of trouble because we don't have enough T3. So if you look over here, you can see the symptoms that include 
um, fatigue, cold intolerance, weight gain, memory problems, poor concentration, depression, hair loss, dry skin, and infertility. So when we have low levels of T3, these are the things that are going to, the, the symptomologies that we're going to present. And again, it's not my thyroid, it's my adrenal glands that are producing too much cortisol because we're, uh, we're not dealing with our stresses properly. The next thing we're going to look at is let's look at some thyroid facts. 30 million people in America have a thyroid disorder. Half of those are undiagnosed. Females are five times more li likely than males, and 20% of diabetics will also have thyroid issues. If we look at the thyroid gland, for those of you who don't know what the thyroid gland does, first off, it's located in the, in the throat area, but what it supports, it's an amazing gland, and it supports a lot of different areas of the body. Let's take a look. Bone metabolism, immune system, brain and nervous system, gastrointestinal function, liver, gallbladder, growth and sex hormones there, it's important. You see, the thyroid is hugely important with regards to um, balancing hormones. Also, fat burning. Your thyroid plays a huge role in your abilities to burn fat and keep the fat off. In this case, we're talking about belly fat. Insulin and glucose metabolism, that has to do with diabetes, healthy cholesterol levels. For all of you out there who have taken statin drugs, big mistake. They're terrible for us. Do your research, research before the doctor gives them to you and you take them. There's tons of research on there. You want to be as educated as possible before you start taking something like the statin drugs that are available. And lastly, um, proper stomach acid. Let's look at some thyroid metabolism quickly. This is a little physiology lesson here. So here's how the thyroid works. Let me get it all up here so I can point it out to you. So your thyroid gland sits in your throat, as I just mentioned, and its job is to produce hormone. 93% of what the thyroid produces is T4, 7% of what the thyroid produces is T3. T3 is the most important hormone in the entire body. Every single cell in the body has to have it. That's why it's so important. If you look at this chart, 60% of T4 gets converted to T3 in the liver, 20% of T4 gets converted to T3 in the gut, and then 20% gets converted into peripheral tissues. So if our liver is not quite functioning properly and we don't convert T4 to T3, we're going to present to the doctor as though we have a thyroid problem. We don't. Our liver's not functioning. The problem with this is, is if your TSH is elevated, your doctor's going to want to write you a prescription for thyroid hormone. It's not your thyroid. It's your liver. In this case, if our gut isn't working, let's say I have constipation, diarrhea, IBS, GERD, reflux, any kind of issues. I could have Crohn's, I could have diverticulitis, inflammatory bowel, anything in my gut that's not functioning properly, I'm not going to be able to convert T4 to T3 like I'm supposed to. TSH will be elevated. My doctor will write me a prescription for thyroid hormone. It's not my thyroid. It's my gut. This is how important it is to fully understand what's happening in the body, how the organ systems all work together and how the glands that produce hormone really are supposed to function. In this case, you want to make sure that you're not taking a hormone that you don't need. We've got to clean the liver. We've got to clean up the gut. We've got to get all the organ systems functioning properly so that we can have appropriate uh, test results. We're not taking drugs that we don't need. Let's look at some diabetic facts. 30 million people in America are diabetic. 80 million people are pre-diabetic. Diabetes is the number one cause of blindness and kidney failure. People with diabetes are four times more likely to have a heart attack or a stroke. Diabetes has tripled since the 1980s and will triple again before 2030. The insulin, let's look at this. The true cause or true underlying cause of diabetes is simple. Insulin surges that cause insulin resistance. So we're going to look at the physiology of what happens. We eat food. It turns into glucose. Our pancreas pumps out insulin. So here's the cell. And all of a sudden, here we go. We've got increased glucose in the blood. When that happens, our pancreas will pump out a bunch of insulin. Insulin's job is to take glucose from the bloodstream to the cell, and it's using it for energy. So here we go. It drags it to the cell, and it's used for energy. That's normal. But because of the great American lifestyle, horrible diet, lack of exercise, too much stress, we're overworked, all of these things play an important role. We go through the process of having large insulin spikes and large insulin spikes and large glucose amounts in the blood or increased glucose in the blood and insulin spiking. When that happens, we develop what's called insulin resistance. This red line here represents insulin resistance. What that means is the cells are resistant 
to the insulin from locking into the receptor site. So this is what happens. Insulin tries to deliver glucose. It's blocked. It can't do it. My blood sugar levels go up. When they go up, my doctor says, oh, guess what? You're now a diabetic. You need to take metformin. He writes you a prescription for a drug you don't need. What you should do is eliminate the insulin resistance and get back to normal sugar metabolism. That's how functional medicine addresses type 2 diabetes. Here's an example. How do we eliminate or reverse type 2 diabetes symbol? Eliminate the insulin resistance and resensitize the insulin receptor sites on the cell membrane. So we've got to get rid of the insulin resistance, resensitize the receptors, and then insulin can do its job dragging the glucose into the blood for, or out of the blood into the cell. We lower the blood sugar. We no longer need the medications. Very straightforward. Let's look at what the tests look like. Diagnostic tests that we do in the office, we use functional lab ranges for every single test that we perform in our office. They're narrower than a regular range, and let's use this as an example. A1C, 4.0 to 6.5. If you're anywhere on the 4.0 to 6.5 scale as far as A1C, and A1C is a three-month marker for blood sugar averages. If you're between 4 and 6.5, in their book, you're normal, okay? You're normal. I say just the opposite. We want to use a range that's a little narrower. It gives us an opportunity to really manage what's going on in the body. If you're 4, 8 to 5, 6, you're normal. Once you are higher than 5, 6, A1C, we call that pre-diabetes right here. Pre-diabetes. That's when we really need to get on it and make sure that we get your body functioning normally. Get back to that non-insulin resistance around the cell membrane so your body can utilize and metabolize sugars properly and keep you from getting on the drug bandwagon that they so are so happy to put you on. Okay? Very straightforward. Anywhere between 5, 6, and 6, 5 pre-diabetes, you've got work you need to do. If you know anything about diabetes and the, and the detrimental effects that it has on the body and the, the, the horrible, horrible, horrible side effects, um, you would want to do something about it right away. Now, here's an example of an individual that came into office. One, there's thousands and thousands of people across the United States who have gone through this program that we're talking about today and had incredible results. This is just one of them that we've seen. This person came in to see us in January of 2016. They were on multiple oral medications for diabetes and two different insulin injections on a regular basis. So every day they were injecting themselves with two types of insulin and taking oral medications. When they first came to us, they were at 207. That was a fasting glucose. Fasting glucose of 207. And their hemoglobin A1C was 9.4. That's just through the roof. Through the roof. Above 6.4 is diabetic. After four months, actually three months of work, we got their blood sugar levels down to 45 fasting. But look at their A1C down here. 5.4. This individual got off all their medications was taking absolutely no medications, just following along with what we taught them in our program. Remember, knowledge is only powerful if you take the knowledge and you apply it by taking action. And that's something that really stands, helps us stand out in a crowd when it comes to other programs. Our program is the only program around where we take you by the hand, we educate you through a step-by-step -step process. It's very easy to follow, it's very structured. The key is we take you by the hand and we teach you how to apply the information on a daily basis in your life. That's what makes us so successful. This is an example of someone reversing their diabetes in a matter of three months. Are you at risk? Let's look at this. Think about this. A diet consisting of high glycemic index carbs can increase your risk of lung cancer in people who are non-smokers by 49%. That's absolutely amazing. So you can be a non-smoker and you have a 49% increased risk of, of acquiring or getting lung cancer if you eat these high glycemic index carbs. This was research in a study that was, what, that was done um, at McGill University. It was fascinating. There's a bunch of these out there. And so it just goes to show you that you really should learn what I should eat and what I shouldn't eat. Let's look at the different body types. Now, you know, don't hold me accountable. I didn't draw these, but these are, these are really simple body types that we see in the office all the time, and they're associated with what's called hormone-driven fat storages. So let's look at the first person here. She's an estrogen-dominant female, 
And so not only is her estrogen dominance going to store her belly fat, but it's going to store her hips and her, and her saddlebags and her butt. In this particular case, this is an, an estrogen dominant female, and this is called hormone driven fat storage. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that if you're estrogen dominant, not only are you going to have this fat storage, but as an estrogen dominant female, you're susceptible to certain types of cancers. And we want to eliminate that by getting you back into balance, reducing your risk. The next female here, she's an adrenal uh, person. Her adrenal glands are just really out of control. She's producing tons of cortisol. Tons of cortisol will store fat. Now, cortisol is an interesting hormone. It'll actually take fat from other parts of the body and store it right in the belly. So this individual here, she's going to have a really hard time eliminating her belly fat if she doesn't get her hormones back into balance, reducing her cortisol output and getting back to a place where she has normal functioning adrenal glands. The next lady here is a thyroid um, individual. Her thyroid is out of control. She's got problems. She's either high or low um, thyroid function, but thyroid doesn't it doesn't really discriminate on where it stores fat. It'll store fat anywhere in the body. So she's going to have fat storage everywhere. The last on the list, whoops, the last on the list is going to be the, the only gentleman up here in his tidy whities Now, liver is not a hormone, but liver is a location. It's an organ in the body where insulin resistance is running, pre is prevalent. In this particular case, we call it a beer belly. And so in order for him to reduce the belly fat that he has there, we've got to clean his liver, get it functioning properly, get back to normal sugar metabolism, reducing his insulin resistance so that the insulin can actually do its job lowering his blood sugar. That beer belly of his or that pot belly of his is never going to go away until we re eliminate his insulin resistance. For those of you out there who've got those machines in the garage, you know, the ones you bought on late night thinking if I just do this abscisor or or belly buster or whatever you've got in the garage collecting dust. If you just did that a hundred times a day or a thousand times a day, somehow your belly fat would go away. That's not how it works. You can bend that fat all you want a million times a day. It's not going anywhere until you balance the hormones and eliminate the insulin resistance in this individual. We want to know what's the true underlying cause of your symptoms. Remember what I said about functional medicine? Identifying the true underlying cause and resolving it. That's the goal. So which one do you really have? Do you have hypothyroidism? Do you have prediabetes or diabetes? Do you have an adrenal stress issue? Do you have hormone imbalances based on these? Maybe you've got toxicities. You haven't, you've been exposed to all kinds of toxins and they're built up in your fat cells and, they, and you just haven't been able to get them cleaned out enough where your body can function normally. Do we have gastrointestinal disorders? We mentioned those earlier. Do I have nervous system interference? That again is involved with toxicities and chemicals that can literally interfere with how your nervous system works. And lastly, do I have an autoimmune condition that no one else has ever identified? It could be a thyroid issue. Autoimmune is where your body's own immune system will attack your own tissues. Your immune system is designed to, to defend you against outside invaders. And sometimes, your immune system loses control of itself and it'll not only attack the outside invader, but it'll attack another tissue of the body like the thyroid, the nerves for MS. It could affect your pancreas. You could have an autoimmune diabetic scenario. There's all types, but you have to be tested in order to really identify that. So we have to have proper testing in order for us to truly identify what's going on with you and how we're going to correct the underlying cause. Can we predict the future of health? I say yes, we can. And this is how we do it in our office. This is what makes us so different than anybody else out there is we first and foremost, we want to order all the correct testing so we can truly identify what's going on with you. Once we've done that, we, de we determine the true underlying cause. We want to focus on the cause, not the symptom. You remember, that's what they do in crisis care crisis care or health care. They're interested in what symptom do you have, what drug do you need to minimize and manage. We want to focus on the cause. We want to focus on the underlying cause, not the symptom. We want to correct the dysfunction, not alter the labs using drugs. The best example I can give you here is somebody who's got high cholesterol and their doctor says, oh my goodness, you need to get on a statin because you know it runs in your family or it's genetic or your grandparents had it or your parents had it. So they write you a statin drug and you take it just because the doctor said you should take it. When you test your labs after this and your cholesterol numbers are lower, 
Those aren't real numbers. Those are fake numbers. Those are numbers based on the drug you're taking, and we don't want to do that. Next, we want to address the body as a whole because all of your systems work together. Your adrenal glands, your kidneys, your, all of your organ systems work together as a whole. So we want to address the body as a whole, not specialize in one area. You go to a cardiologist and he's going to talk to you about your heart, but if you ask him a question about your sprained ankle, he's going to send you to someone else because that's not what he does. We want to address the body as a whole because we know that our body works as one unit. Next, we also use a systematic approach. What this means is pretty simple. Everybody knows who Dr. Oz is. I love Dr. Oz. He's amazing. He's got a great show. Most importantly, he's got an incredible research team that really puts together great demonstrations and it makes it simple for everyone to fully understand what they're talking about. The program that we do in our office has been put together over the last 25 years by doctors who know what works. Why do we know it works? Because we've, t we've tested it in the office with real people. Thousands upon thousands of people across the country have walked through this process and had amazing results. So we use a systematic approach. Lastly, we do mentoring and coaching. is a big part of our program. Why? Well, I can tell you this. I was in the 1984 Olympic trials as a pole vaulter, and I didn't get to that level of athleticism and athletics by myself. I had coaches. I had a therapist. I had a psychologist. I had a nutritionist. I had all of these people work together and mentor and coaching me to get me to that level. And we do that in our office. That's part of the reason why we're so incredibly successful. And this program is able to change so many lives because we mentor and coach. I've mentioned it earlier. It's an easy to follow step-by-step -step process, but the key is you've got to have someone to mentor and coach you on how to apply the knowledge on a daily basis in your life. That's why we use mentoring and coaching. No one else does it. It's a cornerstone of what we do in our office. We immediately felt better from it. Well, and, like within uh, days. Within days. It. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with an underactive thyroid, and um, I was on thyroid medication and was not getting any better. I didn't schedule meetings or any kind of appointments before one o'clock in the afternoon because I just couldn't get the energy levels to do that. I was suffering from um, the diabetes getting worse. It, the medications were not controlling it, diet and exercise were not controlling it. Uh, it, it seemed to me that the doctor kept saying I was going to need to go on insulin and I did not want to do this. David and I were looking for another path to help him get more healthy because he had been diagnosed with diabetes. Um, I also had headaches on a daily basis, migraines a couple times a week that would just knock me out for the entire day or for several days. Um, I was having swelling in my joints, um, my hip would hurt, my knee would hurt, my fingers would hurt, I would wake up in the morning and not be able to bend my fingers. And at the time, I didn't relate all of that to um, other medical issues, I just thought it was age related or I'm getting old so these are things that happen and I'm not really that old. I had uh, open heart surgery in uh, September of uh, 2010, uh, multiple bypass surgery. We could not participate in some of the things that our grandchildren were doing, which we desperately wanted to, but we were, we were always exhausted. It was really affecting the quality of our life. Every fad that came along, I thought, oh, this may be the answer. I'll try it. It, it didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter if it was Weight Watchers, if it was Jenny Craig, if it was Nutrisystem. It, it didn't matter. It was anything along those lines that I thought was going to give me the solution to it and it none of those were the solution we'd been swimming uh, on this beach and and we were taking a break before we decided to head back to where we were staying and i took a walk on the sand and, and on a deck and did not realize that i was burning the skin off the bottom of my feet i ended up having to go to the uh, emergency clinic it was something I realized, and the guy asked me, he asked me if I'd stepped on a campfire, the emergency room doctor, I said no. Uh, and then he said, well, are you a diabetic? And I said, well, yes. It was very scary. And one of the first things David said is, I'm going to lose my feet. 
if I'm this bad and I can't feel my feet, you know, they're going to cut off my feet. And I was like, no, David, no, David, we'll get you to the right place. We heard the ad on the radio for Healthy Beginnings and looked at each other and said, maybe this is the answer. Just in the back of my head, I would think, this is not me. I know that this is not normal for me, um, and this is not how I want to feel or how I want to act, but I just can't get out of it. That's what drove me to go to Healthy Beginnings in the first place, was that I just knew there had to be some sort of better answer out there. I have cut out three of the medications completely. I, do, I no longer take blood pressure, cholesterol, one of the diabetes medications. And the other diabetic medication that I was on is now cut in half. I am off of all medications. I no longer take my Synthroid medication for my thyroid. My levels are all normal and they're very good about monitoring that through the whole process and making sure things stay normal and doing what they need to do to make sure those are normal. Um, I take no over-the-counter medications anymore. It didn't take more than a couple of months. I'm, I'm off all of my uh, blood sugar medicine, off of uh, my Lipitor, and I've lost 50 pounds. I'm feeling a lot better. I've lost 25. You know, I have much more energy. Uh, I'm stronger. I sleep better. My digestion is better. And uh, I think I, you know, I'm able to focus better. Uh, I was taking three medications for high blood pressure and cholesterol. I no longer require those. And I've also lost uh, 34 pounds uh, since uh, starting the program. Really don't wait till you have gotten to the end of your rope. There are easy, simple solutions. And by easy and simple, I don't mean it's not going to be life changing. And I don't mean that you're not going to have to put effort into doing it. But when it's as simple as changing your diet or um, changing the way your activity levels or your exercise happens, um, that's pretty basic. That's not like going through surgery or having major medical procedures or going on 20 medications to fix things. And it goes to the root of the problem to fix the root of the problem, not to address the symptoms of whatever is going on with you physically. With traditional medicine, it's only getting worse and ending up probably having extremities uh, removed. And I wasn't real pleased about that because I'm really attached to my feet. <laughs> yes. You know, it gives you, you know, the, the confidence, you know, that you can, you can become healthier and live a more fulfilling life. Just the way that I feel, I feel fantastic. And they don't talk about, well, you're within a normal range. They talk about optimal health. And why wouldn't we want to strive for optimal health? Because why just settle for being okay when it is pretty easy to be at the best that you can be? It's working. It's what we went after. It has been everything we had hoped for. I can take my three-year-old grandson and throw him up in the air and catch him and pick him up and hold him. And I could not do those things last summer. Though that's the most profound thing for me is the joy of life. We are living now. We are not existing. We are living. So what you, what you just witnessed were individuals who got to a place where they just were sick and tired of being sick and tired. They realized that that system that we call healthcare was not the solution and it would never be their solution. They realized that it was drugs for the rest of their life and they had to do something different if they wanted a different outcome. They heard about Healthy Beginnings, they found out about the program, they sat through some kind of a dinner talk, they came into the office, we got them started, they walked through the process, again, very simple, very structured, very step-by-step, -step, and the results that they got were anything less than amazing. Those individuals are just like you watching this video. If you really want to change your life, if you really want to take back control and get back to being as healthy as you possibly can, this, very, this will be the program for you. Here's the program that they went through. We call it the five pillars of health. We treat the whole person with the five pillars of health. We start with detox first. Detox is really the foundation for everything we do. We've got to clean the body up and get rid of all the toxicity and get the body functioning normally. All the organ systems and everything need to be back functioning normally first. 
from there we're going to roll right into nutrition there's a lot of myths out there about nutrition what we want to do is teach you what you should eat to be healthy and what you need to stay away from that's making you sick and from nutrition we roll into fitness i know i hear it all the time oh but fitness is really important Fitness is really, really important. We've got, to get, we've got to get some fitness into our life. We've got to move our muscles and move our joints and move our body to be as healthy as possible. And it's really pretty simple. We start everybody out at a lower number or whatever your fitness level is, but we max, max out at 30 minutes three times a week. Most people can do 30 minutes three times a week. If you want to do more, that's fantastic, but that's all that we require. The goal is for us to teach you methodology and exercises that are going to stimulate all the good hormones and elevate all the good hormones and shut down and stop all of the bad hormones that make us feel sick. So fitness is going to be an important part of what we're going to do. We also want to test your hormones. We do that at the beginning so we can identify what's going on, where your hormones are, what's elevated, what's diminished, what's high, what's low. And then we want to balance them out using nutraceuticals. For those of you who don't know what Nutraceuticals are. Nutraceuticals are plant-based products that are put together in combination that affect the body's physiology and can affect hormone production. So we want to balance you out and get your hormones into balance. We mentioned earlier on about how important it is that we have over 600 hormones in our body and how they have to be balanced in order for us to be healthy. And just one of them that I mentioned, estrogen, being in a dominant scenario could literally cost you your life. So we really want to balance those hormones. And then lastly, is nervous system. Nervous system really is about the neurotransmitters in your brain. We want to balance those out. Serotonin, GABA, catecholamines, acetylcholine, DOPA. We want to balance these out because that's what makes our brain function normally. When we're in deficit, we can, we can have a lot of problems. An example would be if we've got gastrointestinal problems and we're not producing enough serotonin, we know that serotonin is the number one neurotransmitter involved in depression. So we've got to clean up that gut and get it functioning properly so we have the appropriate level of serotonin being manufactured in the body so that we can feel good and not be in a depressed state. These, these are all taught in a very straightforward, very curriculum-based program. Our program is curriculum-based. It's all about teaching you what am I doing, why am I doing it, and what's my long-term benefit. Our goal for you is that you become independent in your own health. These classes are taught in a very specific, very specific order. It's very specific and they're inextricably connected. We cannot give you the best nutrition and teach you all about nutrition. If your body hasn't been detoxed, you're not going to be able to use the nutrition. So it's very specific. They're inextricably connected. They have to be taught in a very specific sequence in order for you to achieve the results that we get in our office. And that's what makes us so successful. We also know that 94% of failure is due to not having a system. And that's where knowledge comes in. You can have all the knowledge in the world in your head, but if you don't take action and apply it using a system, you're never going to get the results that you're looking for. So what we want to do is make sure that success comes with knowledge, a system to apply that knowledge, coaching, mentoring, and then support. Getting help. Certified functional medicine practitioner. I didn't mention it at the beginning, but I happen to be a certified functional medicine practitioner. If this is the path that you'd like to take, if you decide that you want to go down the path of all natural and try to remove yourself for the most part from that system that's broken called crisis care, where their, their sole solution to everybody and anything that walks in the door is you need another drug, you need another drug, take them for the rest of your life, and that'll make money for the pharmaceutical industry. If you're going to walk down the natural path or do everything you can, in your, in your health is, uh, from a natural standpoint, you should work with somebody who at least has certification. I have a certification in functional medicine as a functional medicine practitioner. It's very much like having a master's degree. So again, if you're going to work with someone, you should work with someone who is certified and knows what they're doing. Ask yourself the following questions. What would my life be like if I were able to resolve my health issues? How has my life been affected? This is important. Most people fail to ask themselves this question because they don't like the answers that you're going to get. How has my relationships been affected? My ability to work for those of us who still work. How about for those who are retired? My ability to enjoy life and have fun. I hear all the time in the office from people who are retired. They say, I worked so hard to get to this place in retirement and I can't do any of the things that I'd hoped that I could do because my body doesn't function, because I'm sick, because I'm taking this drug or whatever it happens to be. 
So these are important questions that you really should ask yourself. And lastly, on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated am I to resolve my health issues? This question is asked for a very specific reason. I'm a small office. We only accept a small number of clients on a monthly basis. That's it. We accept 25 new clients a month and that's it. We don't accept any more. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is this. We spend a lot of time and put a lot of energy into our clients. So it's important that we work with people who are motivated. On a 1 to 10 scale, if you're a 7, 8, 9, or 10, uh, we can work with that. Absolutely. You're somebody who sees the future is bleak. The future is not good for you. The disease is on its way. You're going to be in a, in a really bad state if you don't do something different. We can work with that. If you're a one, two, three, or four, you're just not ready for us. And I'm not here to beat you up. You're just not ready for what I have to offer. At some point in the future, you will be. But right now, you're not. So again, if you're motivated, we'd love to work with you. So find out where you are on that scale of one to 10. I don't know what your why is. I don't know what your reason is for this video. I don't know what your reason is for why you'd want to get healthy. Whatever disease you're dealing with, whatever drugs you're taking, wherever you're at in your life. But this is my why. This is the reason I do what I do. My daughter graduated a year or so ago from Cal State Fullerton. She's got a really good job. We're really excited. And there's my son. My, my son who's a golfer. He's now in school becoming a new uh, music producer and engineer. And then there's my gorgeous wife right in the center there with the black and white dress on. This is why I do what I do for my family. When I was a little boy 50 years ago, my mom got really sick and ended up in the hospital with cancer. She was there for quite a few months, and they never allowed myself, my two older brothers, and my younger sister to see her. So we hadn't seen her for many, many months. One day, my dad sat us down, and he said, your mom's coming home for a visit. So we planned to have a little party in the surprise party for her in the backyard. They brought her home on Saturday. They wheeled her into the backyard. She was in a wheelchair. Now, remember, I hadn't seen her at, in, in many months. I was eight years old at the time. She was my, my mom, my caretaker, my cuddler, my love. She took care of us, and we hadn't seen her. And here she is. She's in a wheelchair. She had a scarf on her head. She had sunglasses on. She couldn't walk. She couldn't talk. And to this day, I don't know whether she even recognized who I was. But we played games, and we had a great time, and we hugged on her. We, had a, uh, we laid out a big blanket. We had a big picnic for her. When it was all said and done, and they were loading her back into the car to take her back to the hospital, my grandmother took her scarf off, and there it was. The secret was revealed that they had convinced my father her only chance of survival was to do an experimental brain surgery. Her head was shaved. There was stitching over the top of her head on both sides. It looked like a baseball. They took her back to the hospital, and that was the last time that I'd seen my mom alive. She died two weeks later. And I know some of you have been through that, and, or you know somebody has, and I'm sorry you had to go through it. But that was my experience. That's what I experienced as an 8-year-old boy. And I believe, and in my belief system is, I believe that it was that moment in time that led me down this path to become the health and wellness expert that I am today. So when my wife and I got married and started talking about having a family, I looked back at my childhood and said to my wife, I promise our kids will never experience what I had to go through. That's, that's my story. And so um, I, we pride ourselves in what we do. I have a passion for what I do. And it's all about teaching and educating people and then taking them by the hand and helping them apply the knowledge and information that I've built up over the last 27 years in private practice, helping thousands upon thousands of clients successfully. That's my passion. Every single day I go to the office is about helping individuals become as healthy as possible so they never have to go through what I went through as a young boy. What's next? Well, first off, did you learn anything? Hopefully you learned a little bit about stress, the different types of stress. You, looked, you heard about some hormones and how they can help us and affect us. The hormones that we talked about earlier, they all are going to store body fat no matter what you do. I'll go back to that. It doesn't matter what program it is. It doesn't matter what exercise you do. The bottom line is those programs don't work because they do not address the underlying cause. You've seen that what I've explained to you, that in crisis care, their goal, their number one thing is to give you drugs. Minimize and manage your symptoms for the rest of your life. That's what makes the pharmaceutical companies happy. So you can see how we're different. And what we do is we go after that underlying cause and we resolve it. And that will eliminate the symptoms. And therefore, it's your doctor's job to reduce and eliminate those medications that are no longer necessary. 
So what's next is really simple. If what we've said today on this video, if what you've learned and what you've heard today makes sense to you and you're really sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're ready to do something different, you're ready to rebuild your health from the ground up and get healthier than you've ever been or healthier than you've been in the last 10 or 15 years, this is what's next. We offer in our office a consultation. A consultation with the doctor. We're going to go, he'll go through all of the paperwork that you're going to bring in that you'll receive when you call the office. And then he'll design, custom design a program specifically to you. He'll customize a program to you because that's what we do. These programs are custom to each individual. This is not a cookie cutter program like what you see out and about where everybody that walks in the door gets the exact same program 600 calories of ideal protein go home and starve yourself everybody gets on a treadmill and walks at the same rate and the same the same elevation and they expect everybody to get the same results that's not how it works our program is customized to you your blood work is different your hormones are different than anybody else so the program is customized to you i put together the 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 program, I'll put together a length of curriculum that I believe is going to be what's necessary to resolve your issues and get you to a place where you want to be. And then I apply what's called or, or present you what's called a plan of action. So consultation, we talk about a length of curriculum and then a plan of action. If we get through all of that and decide to move forward, that plan of action was going to lay out to exactly what our program looks like step by step, week by week. Whatever I've designed for you, whatever your goals are, whatever you want from this program is what I'll customize for you. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Does anybody out there who's listening to this realize how much time does your doctor spend when you go see him? Think about that. I hear all the time in my talks, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 20 minutes. Well, let me tell you the national average from my understanding and research is seven and a half minutes. So the question is, would you want me to spend more than seven and a half minutes with you if I was to look through all your paperwork and go over some of your labs and then customize a program for you to help you resolve your issues? I would hope so. I would. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set aside an hour of time. If you'd like a consultation with me, I'll set aside an hour of time. Okay. The question is this, how much is that going to cost? Well, your doctor's going to charge anywhere from $200 to $1,200 for, for his seven and a half minutes. And I say that's not an even exchange. I don't think it's fair to you. I don't think it's fair, period. It's not an even exchange. So what I'll do is I'll set aside an hour of time. If you'd like to come into the office, my normal rate for an hour of my time is 287 However, I'm going to reduce that to a simple 87 because you watch this video and you have a burning desire to change your life, to change what's happening and take back control of your health. So it's $87. If you have a friend who watched this, a family member, your spouse, a partner, whoever, and they would like a consultation with me as well, I can fit them into the same exact hour for 47. So 87 and 47, it's pretty straightforward. If you decide you'd like a consultation, call the uh, office, You'll, the number will be up. Call the office and set up an appointment. Now, you're going, to re you're going to be directed to my website to download some paperwork. Download it, print it, and fill it out. It'll take you a good 30 to 40 minutes. It's important that you fill out and answer every single question. Yes, there's some questions that repeat themselves, and that's because our organ systems overlap in how they function. So answer every single question. It's really important that you fill out this paperwork before you come to my office. If you have laboratory testing or you've had lab testing in the last year or so, contact your doctor's office and say, I would like a copy of my blood labs. If they won't email them to you, if they won't fax them to you, go by and pick them up and bring them with you. Labs are important because I like to go over the labs. I can show you some things on there that your doctor's not showing you. It'll help me to tie together what organ systems you need work in order for you to achieve the goals and the results that you're looking for. So again, fill out your paperwork completely and bring a set of labs with you if you can. <clears throat> Next, what you would expect when you come to my office. My staff will greet you. They'll get you some water. Um, they'll give you a tour of the office. While they're doing that, I'm going through all of your paperwork and I'm customizing a program based on what you want from me, what your goals are. I'll customize the program. When you and I get together, don't expect me to be wearing a long white coat with my name on it, Dr. Rappi, and a stethoscope around my neck. You know what I'm talking about. You see those pictures in the paper. 
the guys that are wearing their scrubs and the guys that are wearing their their long white lab coats trying to pretend that there's somebody they're not that's not me i'm just going to dress in nice dress slacks and a nice shirt and we're going to sit knee to knee i don't sit behind a great big desk we're going to sit right in two chairs right next to each other we're going to go over all of your paperwork we're going to identify if this is the right path for you if i accept you then we'll go through all the plan of action and everything that i said earlier now one last thing be on time 10 minutes early have your paperwork completely filled out and do not come to my office expecting me to talk you into a program you need to come to my office and convince me that this is what you need to do so that I'll accept you as a client. I'm a success-oriented guy, and I only work with people who I believe will be successful and apply the knowledge that I pass on to them and make incredible changes and turn their lives around. Taking back your health is your most important goal. We want you to become independent in your own health. Okay? So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to helping you out and, and regaining your health to the best of your ability. We want everyone out there to optimize their health and enjoy the rest of their life to the max. Thank you very much. I appreciate it and have a wonderful day.